So this is part four of a tutorial on the gross anatomy of the muscle system. And uh, here we're going to be looking at some of the muscles of the trunk area. And the first muscle we're going to look at is the rectus abdominis, also known as uh, commonly known or called the abs. The origin of this muscle is going to be the pubic crest and symphysis. And the insertion would be the xiphoid process and the ribs specifically the costal cartilages five through seven. Uh, so here's our origin in the pubic region and the insertion is the costal cartilages uh, and we're only looking at the right side of the rectus abdominis. Uh, we do have models in the labs and they would be uh, easy to recognize as I trace them out uh, here on the model. Uh, the part on the left has some of the, uh, the connective tissue here uh, removed. Um, uh, the um, action of this when the muscles contract uh, would basically be pulling uh, down on the insertion so that would help cause a flexing of the vertebral column like when you're doing crunches. The other thing the rectus abdominis can do is uh, help to compress the uh, abdominal cavity. The next muscle is uh, also in the abdominal region. This is uh, called the external oblique. This is because we have uh, two other layers uh, there on the sides of the abdominal uh, wall. Uh, so there's actually three layers. There's an outer layer, which we uh, just uh, are looking at right now, the external obliques. Uh, and then the, the next layer in uh, would be the internal uh, obliques, which would be right there, number two, and then uh, number three would be the uh, uh, transverse abdominis uh, there. And the reason they get their names is because the fascicles and the fibers move at oblique angles relative to the main axis of the body. Uh, in this case, the fibers are running uh, sort of downward on the external oblique we're looking at right now. The internal, the fibers are running uh, somewhat perpendicular to the external one. So on the on the internal oblique, which, will, uh, uh, which is the middle layer, they're running uh, sort of upwards. Uh, and then the transverse, well, that's the same as a transverse section, which needs to move across the main axis like this. So you can see the direction of the fibers on the innermost layer there uh, of the transverse abdominis. So let's go ahead and take a look here at uh, the external oblique, the outermost uh, layer of the abdominal wall muscles. Uh, the origin is going to be the ribs up over here. Those are your origins up there. Uh, the insertion is going to be the ilium right here and uh, the linea alba in the middle right here is a line of, uh, sort of connective tissue there. Now overall this the action of this muscle when it contracts is going to be uh, to help compress the, the abdomen, uh, but it can also help rotate uh, the trunk depending on uh, which side is, uh, 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 is acting, which one is contracting. The next muscle, oh, well, let's take a look at the image here before we move on. Uh, this is an image uh, showing the rectus abdominis, which we covered just before. Uh, and then the outermost layer here on the sides there there's your uh, external oblique. The next layer in here would be the internal oblique, which by the way is not on your list. And then the, the transverse uh, abdominus there, or the innermost layer. So the one on this slide here, we're looking at the outermost layer, uh, the external oblique. And notice that uh, the uh, uh, overall the direction of the fibers are moving uh, sort of downward. Uh, the next one is uh, uh, the transverse abdominus. So that's going to be the innermost layer. So uh, in this particular case, uh, as far as your laboratory course, uh, the uh, internal obliques are not on your list, but be aware that there's a middle layer there. And so we move to the innermost layer here. The name BIS is based on the direction that the fibers are going within the muscle and the transverse on the transverse plane. And the origin is going to be the ilium and the ribs. 
So there's the ilium right here. There's your origin there. You also have origin as part of the ribs. And uh, the insertion is going to be on the uh, linea alba, which is uh, that line that goes between uh, the two sides of the rectus abdominis, as well as the xiphoid process, which is that process that comes down from the sternum there. Uh, so these are the insertions. And the action here as well is to compress the abdomen. The next muscle uh, is going to be found between the ribs. Uh, and there are two layers there. So there's the, this first one here is the external intercostals, which means between the ribs. And here the origin is going to be the lower margin or border of the rib above. And this muscle will move uh, the rib below uh, as it inserts on the upper margin or border of that rib. And so overall this action is going to be uh, pulling upwards on the ribs which elevates the ribs uh, which occurs during inspiration when you're breathing in. Uh, so you can look here the direction of the fibers would be pulling overall upwards on the rib cage on the ribs causing the rib to expand forward uh, uh, allowing you to take air in. Uh, so here Note the direction of the fibers as well uh, in there uh, for identifying this muscle. If we look over here in this area on the image on the right, we're looking at uh, deeper muscles, muscles uh, deeper to than the pectoralis uh, minors here on the left side of the image. So on the right side of the image, or uh, what would be the left side of this individual in the drawing here, uh, this right here would be one of the uh, external intercostals and so their action is to pull up on the ribs during regular breathing. The next muscle is the internal uh, intercostals and so for the internal intercostals they are basically going to be doing the opposite um, here so the origin would be the upper margin uh, or border of the uh, of the rib below and the insertion would be the lower border of the rib above so when these muscles contract they're going to help pull the ribs together which actually brings uh, the rib cage inward uh, and that helps us to force air out of the lungs uh, this muscle would be used mostly during labored breathing rather than a relaxed state of breathing uh, so if we look here at the muscle between the ribs, you see the direction of the fibers are in a different direction. Okay. And so when these uh, muscles are contracting, uh, overall we're going to be pulling uh, the, rib, uh, the ribs closer to each other, which moves the, the thoracic cage inward. And we look at the uh, same image I had on the prior uh, slide. Uh, but this time for the internal intercostals, they are going to be uh, all right here and uh, deeper to the external intercostals. So this would be the external intercostal. And then behind that would be the internal intercostals. The next muscle is the main muscle for uh, breathing is the diaphragm. Now the diaphragm completely separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. And so uh, uh, the origin uh, for this muscle is going to be the lower ribs, uh, the sternum, and even part of the, uh, uh, of the lumbar vertebrae uh, down in this area here. So what we're doing here on the image on the far left here is looking up and under, underneath the thoracic cage where the the diaphragm separates and so the or origin basically is all the way around the ribs uh, the sternum up here and all the way around basically sealing off uh, the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity below and some major organs need to actually come through there so here's your esophagus your major artery the descending aorta and the inferior vena cava right here uh, but all of these muscles basically are going to uh, insert on this uh, large tendon or the central tendon. So when the muscle contracts, basically going to be pulling down, downward on this central tendon. Uh, and overall, the diaphragm is like a dome shape within your, within your ventral cavity. 
and so it contracts that uh, that muscle flattens out and pulls downward and that helps expand the volume in your thoracic cavity which pulls air in so again the insertion would be on that central tendon uh, which I'll go ahead and outline uh, right here quickly and um, again the action is uh, to help in breathing this is the major muscle of inspiration the external intercostals also help as well during uh, relaxed breathing uh, the internal intercostals are uh, going to become involved when we are uh, breathing more heavily like during exercise and we need to exhale faster then that muscle would come into play and then we have uh, we're going to cover three muscles now uh, that are collectively called the erector spinae because they cause uh, you to help uh, maintain uh, your column in an extended uh, uh, position uh, so they help you stand erect um, and so uh, the action of these one of the main actions is going to be extends the vertebral column which means uh, upward or bend uh, further back um, as well the origin of this particular uh, muscle so there's three uh, and they go from uh, near the spine and then uh, uh, there's going to be a third muscle group and uh, I mean a second muscle group right outside of it the longissimus uh, and then um, uh, the, the iliocostal muscle or the iliocostalis muscle that uh, we're going to see more towards the outside so we'll cover them in order uh, here looking from the medial most muscle and again we have one on the left and the right so I'm going to kind of outline it because we have one uh, up here uh, in the capitis region or near the head and then a thoracis uh, right here just right on the outside of the spiny processes or spinous processes of the vertebrae uh, right there so the origin is going to be lumbar and uh, thoracic vertebrae so your lumbar is down here so here's your origin down here and the insertions are going to be upward in the thoracic area so your insertions would be up here and even the cervical area for the the the, um, uh, the part the portion of the muscle that's up here for the spinalis uh, so uh, basically when these muscles contract uh, one of the things we're going to do is help you straighten and even bend back uh, backward which is an extension so we extend the vertebral column with the uh, spinalis now uh, I did pick a model typical model we have in the lab and you can see on it that on the right side we have our uh, our superficial muscles and then on the left we have our deeper muscles and so if we remove uh, the trapezius or the traps as they refer to them um, um, like in the gym and stuff uh, then over here we have muscles like the splenius and here's the uh, rhomboid minor and the rhomboid major uh, and then we have even some other muscles here that are still on top of the muscles we're trying to get to uh, these are uh, uh, serratus muscles uh, they're the posterior ones and so deep to those you're going to have your erector spinae group so this is part of uh, all right here that I'm tracing on there all of that is part of your um, uh, erector spinae uh, so uh, if you move more towards the end and, and trying to distinguish them on the model would be kind of hard uh, to do uh, but that would be them here so let me go ahead and outline them um, I mean underneath the rhomboid major uh, so these right here would be uh, erector spinae muscles all in there and so uh, those muscles there and then again there's these muscles that are right here that are uh, superficial to them they're still deeper muscles but these uh, are serratus muscles uh, on the posterior side we have serratus anterior which we covered uh, in the prior uh, tutorial uh, so the insertion again uh, is going to be in in portions of the vertebral column higher up in the thoracic and cervical regions and so when these muscles contract pulling from the lumbar is going to cause you to extend your back the next uh, group is is the the middle group of the erector uh, spiny uh, muscles and this is the longissimus we already saw longissimus uh, higher up 
uh, in the column. There's a longissimus capitis. Uh, there's a longis, uh, longissimus services, which again we saw in an earlier tutorial. And so here I'm going to focus on the uh, longissimus uh, thoracis uh, over here. So here the origin is going to be in the lumbar vertebrae. Uh, so that would be down, down over here uh, as far as your origin goes. And the spinalis would be uh, more along the uh, uh, closest to the uh, spinal column. We're looking at the next uh, group of muscles, uh, this longissimus uh, thoracis. And the insertion would be the thoracic vertebrae, specifically the transverse process is the process to take out the side of the vertebrae, as well as the angle of the lower 10 ribs. So uh, when we start coming up here to so the thoracic vertebrae, we have our insertions along the process of stick outward. You're also gonna have your insertions on the angles of the ribs. This is where the ribs angle and begin to bend forward because uh, we're looking at the uh, posterior view of the spinal column. So if this is our origin and our insertions are up in this area here, then when both sides contract, then that also helps to extend the back. And uh, these muscles, if they're activated only on one side or the other, they could help you uh, rotate the vertebral column in the direct in the same direction as that muscle. So if the right longissimus uh, contracts with some other muscles uh, would cause this uh, the spinal column to rotate uh, toward the right. Uh, looking at an uh, image from that was given to you on a, on a document right here, these right here, this area would be uh, and deeper to the rhomboideus muscles, the major and the minor there deep to them, all right along here, this is where you would find your erector spiny. And along the inside, right there is the spinalis, and then the longissimus is the next layer. And we're gonna move on to uh, the, the lateral most uh, uh, group of muscles of the erector spiny. And those are gonna be the iliocostalis, which gives you some idea, ilio as in the uh, like the ilium or more towards the ilium uh, and this one actually has three regions there's the cervices uh, thoracis and uh, lumborum for the lumbar area and again these are part of the erector spiny uh, group and so I'm going to give the origins in the order uh, based on uh, the neck uh, thorax and the lumbar region um, so for the origin for the uh, uh, cervices uh, area of the iliocostalis. That would be ribs uh, 3 through 12 uh, at the angles. Okay, so if we're looking up here, ribs, uh, we start up at high 1, 2, 3 at the angles. Those would be your um, your origins there. Okay, Origins would be around here. And the insertions for them, uh, for the cervices, would be C4 to C6. So those are cervical vertebrae at the transverse process. So that would be around this area right here, where we would have our insertions. Uh, and this area right here, where we would have our uh, origins. Uh, so again, if both sides are contracting, that's gonna help extend uh, that area of the back. And if only one side contracts, then uh, then that can actually help bend your back side uh, toward the side, okay? Uh, one side or the other, the right side, of course, to the right. Uh, and if we look at the uh, thoracis, then the thoracis area, then we also going to include uh, more ribs for the origin at the angles. Uh, so we would go lower uh, here, including some of the ribs from um, uh, maybe 4 through 12 all the way down there. So uh, ribs 3 through 12 are all uh, influenced like this, but the thoracis po uh, portion of this muscle will be there. And then the ribs um, one through six at the angles. So now uh, right up around here, we're gonna have insertion. So when this muscles contract and we're pulling downward, that's gonna basically pull this portion of the spinal column back if we are using both sides. And again, if we use only one side, then that can help us laterally bend and perhaps even rotate uh, the spinal column. Um, and then the last group, uh, or the last portion of this uh, iliocostalis muscle, the lumborum, the, uh, the origin is gonna be the ilium, uh, specifically the crest and the sacrum. So we look down here, here is your ilium right here. 
So that would be one of the origins. And then the sacral crest right here. So this would be your origins for uh, the Lamborum of the Iliocostalis. And then we're going to go up to rib 7 through 12. Uh, so 12 is the last one, 12, 11, and so on, all the way up around here. And that would be your uh, your insertions there. So again, if we're contracting from both sides, that's going to help extend the back as well, which is why it's part of the erector spiny muscles. Uh, but this can also help you laterally bend the vertebral column if one side of the muscles are, are being used only. And this concludes the tutorial on the muscles of the trunk uh, that you should know for the laboratory portion of the course. Remember that you should practice identifying the muscles by name, either using your body, a model, or an image. Uh, recite and write, practicing over and over again. Testing yourself, seeing if you can name and spell the name of the muscle. Uh, you also need to know the origins and insertions and an action uh, for the muscle. And, and it should not just include a word like extend or rotate. You have to say what part is being extended or rotated. And uh, basically, you could just talk about uh, the insertion that's being acted on or uh, a generally um, uh, uh, a major portion of the body that we're uh, acting upon. For example, the, the rectus abdominis, uh, when it, up, it goes up and it inserts on the ribs, well, yeah, it's going to be moving the ribs, uh, but what is it doing overall uh, to the trunk? It's, it's uh, going to be flexing. Uh, it's going to be flexing the vertebral column. As, uh, as is the case when you're doing crunches. Uh, and uh, so you may want to, uh, another way to learn some of these muscles, not all of them, uh, but uh, those that you can actually uh, feel that you are moving. So you can learn kinesthetically by trying to move your body with those uh, types of uh, actions for those muscles. Uh, so that's it for this fourth tutorial.